Well, thanks for staying with us on the show. And like I said before the break, we're joined by an esteemed member of the 10th Senate. And I'm talking about none other than the editor-in-chief of a magazine, which I've had the privilege of also having a copy to look at. It is the maiden edition of a quarterly magazine as published by the 10th Senate under its editor-in-chief, who is also the chairman, Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Talking about Senator Adeyemi Adaramodu. Good morning to you, distinguished sir. Good morning, my dear brother. I must commend you before we get into any details on the quality of this material at hand. It is indeed deserving of such publication. I must commend you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's begin to highlight some of the issues with which necessitated or informed the 10th Senate of putting together a magazine like this. What, what was he hinged on? What informed the position of the Senate to embark on such a project? Well, uh, yes. Like uh, the Subriquet goes, is a 10th Senate that we call the Uncommon Senate. Under the Uncommon leadership of uh, Senator Godfrey Obota Pabio. Over the years, that the parliament had been inaugurated in Nigeria, especially at this fourth republic. We found out that there had been serious misconceptions, skewed stories about the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. And we just found out that at the end of the day, those things, very lofty ideals, that the Senate and the National Assembly stand for had never been in the parlance of the public glare. And we know that when you don't tell your story, nobody is likely to tell your story the way your story is. Because if they have the opportunity of even telling your story, they will take it from their own angles. And the angles might be insidious and invidious at times. It might be unscrupulously skewed against you. And so we believe that the traditional media and the, on, and the new media that is online, which we call the social media, they have been doing their own. They bring out whatever proceedings that go on within the parlance of the adult chambers of, the, of both chambers. Besides that, there are so many other things that the parliament does that are not reported or underreported. And we believe and we think wisely that the best to do is to get out there, be out there, shun out the stories as they are. That the National Assembly is quite colorful, not only in the things that they use to do the building be colorful in actions and activities to show that yes the parliament is living to the bill in that without the parliament there can never be democracy and so if we want to assume and put that one into reality then whatever the national assembly is doing must be shown out to the people to the public to see and as representatives of the people then you must see us to be representing them the way they want us to represent them. So we now want to use this magazine to tell our stories the way our stories are. And when you look at the media edition, you see not in theory, but even in pictures, activities, views, motions, interventions, even oversight functions, and advocacy with constituents. You see it there. And so we intend to be doing that one quarterly, 33 months, put up all our activities in the Senate, the ones that could not even be reported by either the newspapers or electronic media or the social media. So we now show them out for people to see, for people to read, for people to behold, for our constituents to know that we are not in Abuja, just to go and dance around the way some of suspecting public we see us. So that is why it is very pertinent and very imperative for us to put up this kind of media organ that can do that one and fill in the gap. Now, us. now thank you, Senator, for highlighting the background upon which the publication of this magazine was premised. 
Now, you also highlighted perception in terms of your constituencies, whom some of your colleagues also represent in the hallowed chambers. It brings to question the debate on democracy and the power of legislation. Uh, quite recently, there was the controversy surrounding constituency projects as well. Now, is it in line with keeping with this that this magazine would also spotlight some of the progress remarkably made in terms of constituency projects? Yes, sure. In the next edition, we are going to have a breakdown of you know, committee by committee, the standing committees of the Senate. What they have done, the interventions they have made, then we now come to individual legislators. The, when we talk of constituency projects, no senator owns a project. We can only be called upon at times, which they call constituency projects, to write what are those projects you think are very pertinent. First line charge, maybe one or two, to be put into your constituencies. These are written, given to the federal government through the MDAs, the ministries, departments, and agencies, and then channeled to the appropriation committee to them. Then the MDAs in turn, when they are reflecting their in their budget, they put these constituencies into recog into cognizance. Because we believe that we come from constituencies. The federal government is here in Abuja. The federal government is in, not in Lawekiti. It's not in Omoekiti. It's not in Edaile. It's not in Aiseba. But we come from these areas. We know what they want. Nobody will sit in the cozy office in Abuja and determine what they want in Ejaikiti or in Kerekiti or in Seoru. So it is we. So just a token. We now have to nominate projects that, oh, our people want maybe boreholes, maybe a clinic, maybe to renovate one of their schools. So we put it there. That is what they call the uh, constituency projects. So this magazine, we highlight what are the constituency projects nominated by individual legislators or senators to their constituencies. And then the people will keep watching whether this will be done or this will not be done. This is apart from federal government general budget or state government general budget, which can go and which we cannot monitor. The only monitoring we can do is about if you have come to us for appropriation, then we have to see that every cobble to, goes to where you told us that that cobble will go. That's the only, that's our own concern. But the major concern for us on the constitution project is, is that the token that is going to be given to our consultancies, then we have to make sure that it is given to them. So that is about the consultancy project. And uh, this magazine will now highlight and showcase it at the end of every budgetary session. We put it there. These are what consultancies will be expected and we must be expected from senators as projects nominated by the senators to their consu various consultancies. And then committees at the end of the day, we will highlight committee by committee all standing committees, all the sixty all the sixty-seven standing committees will be highlighted, then they will put it there. What are the interventions they have done so far? Even at times when we have to, maybe like power committee about tariff, maybe like a downstream, upstream committee, gas committee about the issue of petroleum resources and then the all those uh, prognosis around it so maybe about transportation committee so about cng buses and so on and so forth so all those things will be highlighted so that the people will see that their senators are not just coming to abuja just to come at georgia and speak grammar that yes they are doing what they have elected them to do so now, in reference to the front page of the magazine, about the top left-hand corner is a piece and a feature that captions 10th Senate, the emergence of visionary leadership. Yeah. And for the first time in the history of the hallowed chambers, it has been a multi-party national assembly. But under the leadership of the current president of the Senate, Senator Gosu Lakmabio, there's a perceived harmonious relationship, a large entourage of your colleagues follow him around when their engagements across different parts of the country there's a seemingly presence of 
brotherhood and camaraderie despite different political leanings how has this been achieved oh yes uh in the parliament the national assembly as it is called in nigeria there's no party there's no delimitation of even states and even districts whenever we get into the adult chambers we are one we are serving nigeria and nigeria is one very indivisible united so we now evolve and invoke that unity so this 10th senate leadership under what i call the uncommon leadership of senator goldsmith obota pabio is that we want to do very uncommon things even the issue of this uh magazine for the first time in the history of uh, nigeria said it is a magazine is birth to highlight and showcase the activities of the senate so it makes it more or common and so in the senate it's a big family it's one family and then the leadership of senator about uh, goes with Opo, about and Pabio has been very very inclusive when you look at standing committees the chairman and the vice chairman cut across the various parties that are represented in the senate we have the APC, the PDP, the SDP, the NNPP, the Labour Party, and then some other parties that people will even think that they still exist in the calendar of INEC. <laughs> so it is not about how many constituents and or how many people voted for your presidential candidate why during the election. It is that whenever you come to the Hallowed Chamber as a senator, then you are taken as equal. As someone who comes from APC or PDP or Labour Party. So we are all bonded together under that kind subgrade of uncommon Senate. And the only focus is the development of Nigeria, the unity of Nigeria. We have to show that example. We have to let people know that once the parliament is together and is one under one leadership of the uncommon leadership of God, uh, God be, uh, about God with a Pabio, then definitely people should take a key from that and ensure that the unity of Nigeria is not vitiated, the unity of Nigeria is not negotiated, the unity of Nigeria is not even negotiable. So that's how we are be keeping on, and that is what is keeping the Senate together, and that is what is making us thick, and that's why this magazine comes into being because. If we can do this one, this time around, it means that because the house is conducive, because the house is together, that's why there is one voice that there must be a voice that will push the voice of the Senate to the general public through the magazine. Now, now beyond pushing the voice of the 10th Senate to the general public within Nigeria, I, I must once again commend the leadership of the National Assembly. The parliament has now gained recognition in the community of the international Parliamentary Union, the IPU. Yeah. Senator Gosu Labota Pabio led the Nigerian delegation uh, and it was more so on also his induction into the union. Yeah, that, I, I've seen a provision in the magazine where I think you have a piece on this as well. Yes. Do you care to buttress this? Yes, yeah, oh, yes. You know, uh, because of like uh, an adage in Yoruba, they will say, which is which in English is charity begins at home. Then we say Tiliba Sonny, Ita Sonny. Meaning that if the house is pleasing, pleasant for you to live in, then we only by the time you go out, they will see the sign in you and on you vividly. And then it means that that outside benevolently they are going to accord you that kind of Pleasantry that you are coded at home, because home is good. When uh, our senior president got to the appeal, then it made it very easy for those our colleagues out there globally to recognize that in him.
to see it in him. To see it in him to the extent that they have to be, make him the leader. Globally. So, we don't have any reason not to. Be very proud of the leadership of the 10th Senate and then the leadership traits and exploits of Senate President Goldsmith Apabio in this wise. We have no reason not to. We have to celebrate him. But the, celebra the celebration is not supposed to be limited to the senators. It's supposed to be general. That's why in this magazine, we have to push it out there that lest we forget this is what has just happened to Nigeria under the leadership of an uncommon leadership of Senator Goldsmith Apabio. If this is happening to Nigeria this time around, Nigeria is not the only country where we practice democracy and where there is parliament. Why did they choose Goldsmith Apabio to lead? It is because home is good, our Senate is good, Nigerian parliament is a primus it appearance. That Nigerian parliament is not antithetical to the tenets and the testaments of popular democracy. So that's why in the magazine we celebrated that. It's not an achievement for Governor Pabio alone. alone. It's not even for senators alone. It is for Nigeria as, as, a, nation. as a nation. It's for Nigeria. It's for us to be proud of and for us to build on. And then we cannot go back again. Go into a, into a, into a minus gradient. Politically. In Nigeria anymore. Because once we are at the pinnacle. Of international parliamentary union. So definitely. We cannot demand for anything less. And when we, want to, we don't want to demand for anything less. It means that here. Stoically and deliberately, we must put in place within the facets what's going to promote excellence, united front, and advancing Nigeria, progressive citizenry, and then an engagement with the public in a manner that the public will know that yes, we don't have lazy bones that we have sent to the National Assembly, that the National Assembly members, either senators or House of Representatives members, that they are there to represent Nigeria, and that they will do them proud. And this magazine is to further enhance that their belief in us, to show them these are the things that we are doing that, is, that are making us think that are making us being recognized globally. These are the things. So because uh, in our traditional parlance, they will say what, if you want somebody to represent you somewhere, how well have you represented yourself? So you want people to talk about you. What have you said about yourself? You want people to say something and they represent you to the third party. Then what have you rep represented yourself to even the second party? Who is going to represent you well to the third party? So that's why we have to bring out this magazine as a mouthpiece, as our own speaker, because I don't quote, as our own ombudsman. Now, now Senator, let, let's touch on some sensitive subjects, especially in regards to legislative dis diplomacy. Mm -hmm. The Ninth Assembly in some sections of perception were dubbed a rubber stamp assembly. The 10th Senate now has approached the issue of legislative diplomacy from an angle of a working relationship with the executive arm of government that seems as though there are disagreements at different levels, even with the standing down of the confirmation of certain nominees sent by His Excellency the President. Notwithstanding, this has not fractured the relationship with, with the drive to achieve the renewed hope mandate. How has this been possible again? Oh, yes. Uh, luckily, and then by happenstance, I was a member of the Ninth National Assembly. I was in the House of Representatives then. I would not agree with anybody who would say that any session of the National Assembly, be the Ninth or the Tenth, 
or the future ones had been a rubber stamp assembly. I now just not to waste time to go into expletives. Now trans, uh, transpolating that one to the tenth National Assembly. The National Assembly, especially the Senate, I don't know the definition of what they mean by rubber stamp, but what I'm what I want the public to know is this. The critics and those people that are even liberally the National Assembly rubber stamp, are they expecting the National Assembly to be up in gloves against the executive or judiciary? Do they expect World War instead of Georgia? Does it mean that when there is no war, when the National Assembly is not moving, motions against the federal government or against the judiciary, then the National Assembly has become a rubber stamp. We are in this Nigeria. When the executive brought nominees from ministerial appointments and the National Assembly in the Senate, after screening, rejected about three or four. If it were to be a rubber stamp National Assembly, everything would have passed. That's what we have been in this Nigeria. When tariffs were increased, and the same National Assembly said no, that you keep it. And it was kept. We are in this Nigeria. We have we have summoned Central Bank Governor Service Chiefs Service Chiefs and put their feet on fire about security and the econo and, and our economy. And we were there all over the media that this is the stance of the Senate over these issues. Does that show a rubber stamp assembly? But what we, I want to say is that if the judiciary, the executive, even the media, whoever brings anything that is going to advance the course of Nigeria positively, we are ready to rubber stamp it. To that extent, we could be rubber stamp. So not only from the executive, from whoever, even people that are not Nigerians, but they are friends and well wishers of Nigeria. If they come around and give us Either a project or a program, either suggest any any engagement that is going to give life more abundance to Nigerians. We are going to rubber stamp it. To that extent, we are rubber stamp. But if it is that, oh, it is through dictation, I don't think it has ever happened. And Nigerians should not expect that Nigeria will develop when the National Assembly is up in glo a gloves or arms against the other arms of government, be it judiciary or executive. I don't think so. The National Assembly majorly houses the representatives of the people. In the executive, it's only the president that was together with vice president that were elected. In the judiciary, Nobody came into election. But in the National Assembly, all of us, 360 House of Representatives members, and then 109 senators, they are all through the benevolence and grace of God and the people of Nigeria. So we represent the people. And because we represent the people, whatever we do in the National Assembly, we take it from our constituents. From our constituents. And so, they must give us the biggest support to get done what is necessary to be done. That Nigeria can be out of the woods, that can be out of the economic doldrums, that can be out of political morass, that can be out of security cataclysm. That is what the general public should do. The, the National Assembly or the Parliament should be the closest to them of the three arms of government because and even we are because when my cousin will reach out to me they will not reach out to the president or to the governor the access they even have to you the access you being able to come to the, the access house. i have to throw the doors of my house open every time they have my phone numbers they call variously at any time 
And what betide you if you deny them that access? Because you will not come back to them again. So definitely it means that since we are the closest to the people, then the people must show that yes, we are the ones that they will get across to when there are issues. And so they should believe in us. Please more premium on the National Assembly or the or the Parliament. Because I know and they know and everybody knows. Where there's no parliament, there's no democracy. The rest will be anarchy, oligarchy, autocracy, autarchy, or whatever. So that's why our magazine, as you rightly said, we want to bridge that gap. We want the people to know this is where we are, this is what we are doing. And then their contributions will be based and be informed by whatever performances or engagements that we engage in that we showcase to them. Well, it's quotable from the words of the editor-in-chief of the 10 Senate magazine, Senator Adeyemi Adaramodu, who says, and I quote, where there is no parliament, there is no democracy, as has also buttressed the role of the working relationship between the executive arm of government and the legislative arm, one which he says can be further buttressed by the position of Nigeria in the global community of nations. As the president of the Senate received a leadership position at the IPU. And let's revisit that historic moment this morning and we'll come back to more developments as it concerns the urge for a constitutional amendment and other issues that the 10th Senate has been saddled with. Take a listen. The senator representing Kogi East, Senator Issa Jibrin, drew the attention of his colleagues to the deadly attacks in his constituency, which led to loss of lives and property. Armed heads, headers invaded the Agoje Judo, Ajopajudo, Bagaji, and Bagana communities, killing 21 innocent citizens, including women and children, in addition to unprecedented destruction of their farm produce. Uh, alarmed that on 30th April 2024, gunmen attacked a Jokwachiodo community in Omala local government area, killing no fewer than three persons and rendering the entire community desolate, with no health facility to cater for the uh, deteriorating health conditions of the survivors. Contributing to the debate, some senators lamented the continuous killings in some parts of the country, saying it brings a feeling of hopelessness among Nigerians. What we owe this uh, people goes beyond rhetoric, go beyond condemnation, go beyond one minute silence, go beyond crying every day. No, our tears will solve this problem. I submit, sir, that we set up an other committee, invite public hearing, let it be well publicized, let everybody come there and share with us what they know, and reach our limited knowledge of what is going on across the country, and let us find what's and for us a lasting, sustainable solution. Today, as it is, the livestock industry is worth 30 trillion naira. In fact, some authorities will tell you it's 30 trillion naira in Nigeria. So this is a very important industry. And we cannot neglect it. If all the cattle you consume in the United Kingdom, you see them on the streets of the United Kingdom or England, nobody sees these things on the road. It's only here that we can stay and every morning headers will invade a community, kill 30 persons, touch the houses, burn their properties, displace them, and we have no solution to it. Ruling on the motion of the killing of innocent citizens in some parts of Kogi East, President of the Senate, God's Willick Pabu, said the summit will be all-encompassing. The upper chamber consequently resolved to set up an ad hoc committee comprising one senator from each geopolitical zone to look at the matter holistically. An ad hoc committee to look at the issue of uh, farmers, setters, uh, clashes holistically with a view to convoking a national uh, summit to discuss the issues and take decisions therefrom uh, to guide the Senate in uh, establishing the necessary legislation that will bring an end to these clashes and killings. And uh, of course, you've seen that the whole thing is actually a national menace, and everybody is very concerned uh, across uh, 
all the rights in the country. Thereafter, observed a minute silence in honor of those killed in Kogi State. From the National Assembly, Mariam Zakari, ADB. Now, Miriam Zachary is our National Assembly correspondent, and it's on another sensitive issue as we revisit the Constitution, Amendment discussions, and legislative interventions of the 10th Senate. I have with me here the Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Now, one of those issues has been on the gains of even the livestock industry, and as against the provisions or legislations to ban open grazing, to reduce the conflicts of headers, farmer, clashes well this has been an issue that has been also treated with ethnic and religious sentiments oftentimes the issues blown out of proportion has been one religion versus the other or one ethnicity versus the other the sad story is that those in the north central middle belt north east northwest are the ones who bear the brunt most times and now we're seeing it even trickle down to the south even to the west as well but in the west we've seen some remarkable progress in the ranching system of raising cattle from this legislative perspective how do we go about addressing this issue from the call for a national security summit? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of a uh, header farmers matter had been on for a very long time. This open grazing issue, transhumans, then at times we talk about ranching and so on and so forth. It is not to this problem. And uh, like you rightly said, it's not supposed to be a religious matter, it's not an ethnic matter. While Nigerians cannot do without the products of the Hadas, which is cattle, and the products and the byproducts, either in export or local use, and even the supply of protein on our tables, on our dining tables. So surely, and not only that, it is an employment device for millions of Nigerians. And when we talk about even cattle matter, it is no more about another matter anymore. Because in my own town, so many town people own livestock, cows. So it's no more somebody that it is limited to someone who is from Sokoto, someone from Milawi, Kititu, do have. So the rear cattle. Now, they decided when this was brought up fresh the issue that was not serious heated argument because there should be heated argument whenever any issue is brought into the hallowed shapers because that is why they call us a parliament you talk you speak you argue you lobby especially when it is an opinion or a, or a motion or even a bill so after all the arguments, then the leadership of the Senate under uh, Senator Goswami Pabio said, okay, this is supposed not to be a hollow debate. It's not supposed to be the debate of the senators alone. That let this thing be holistic. Let all of us in Nigeria sit down together and find a lasting solution to it. Since it is, it has been considered to be one of the channels of insecurity let us either it's an alleged or it is just a big belief so let's sit down that's why a committee had been set up to first of all look at it then make re recommendations to the senate then after that recommendations then a general summit will now be convoked whereby nigerians all the critical stakeholders we now come and say what they want to say and what they want to suggest and what they want to propose, including the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. And then all the states and all the individuals or groups or cooperative groups that essentially are interested or involved in Katuriani, ranching, or Hadi. So, and I think not to preempt what the committee will bring we come up with so the senate will now rest it with the committee let them bring their recommendations let that summit be convoked let us see what the critical stakeholders will say and we want and whatever they say and they want 
we transmit that one to the federal government. If it is necessary for, for the National Assembly to do legislation, to make a law that this is where and how it should be, then it will happen. So that is where we can rest it for now about the issue of hardening, rushing, rearing of cattle in Nigeria. Now let's come to other legislative interventions of the 10th Senate and much in line with the cries and yearnings of Nigerians. Whilst we look at the current rate of inflation, the exchange rate and the economic hardship, the 10th Senate and largely the parliament has played a role in standing down certain levies and also calling on the suspension of certain intended hikes in tariff. Uh, would you care to expatiate more on what informed the Senate to make such interventions? Yes. Uh, the 10th Senate, when we came on board, we said that Nigerians will not work alone. We will always be with them. Not only that we represent them. Not only that we represent their interests. Not only that they bring us to Abuja. But we too are concerned. Because what, let me tell you something. In Nigeria today, like I told you that, we are very close to the people. If there is any problem, economically especially, we are the first to feel the heat. Because our constituents will inundate us with demands. So if the economy is running very well, you can sleep with your two eyes closed. And apart from that economic challenges, what about the attendant security problems that that one will bring? Now, is there anybody in Nigeria who is a legislator who will not like to work freely on the streets of his hometown? But if the people are hungry, then we are in trouble, we are in soup. Apart from the fact that if you have two cups of rice to eat in your family, and then you have ten visitors who are ready to share it with you, you are not likely to get two, three or, or four spoonfuls to eat by yourself. But if the economy runs very well and they can take care of themselves, then your two cups of rice will be adequate and enough for you. So definitely we are the first to feed the heat. And because of that, we must in no honesty and good conscience ensure that things run very well. That's why we believe that we should intervene and we must intervene and we are intervening. The issue of tariff when it came up, we were not even in session. And the issue of tariff, the recent electricity tariff came up. We are not in session. Especially uh, assembly, uh, in um, uh, Shimbai session, we were not. The majority of us and almost all of us were in our constituencies. And then when the issue came up, the Committee on Power had to convene, look for themselves, wherever, from different constituencies within the Nuku and Kranis of Nigeria. And they came back to Abuja. And they sat and they viewed it and debated it. And they even invited the Honorable Minister for Power, who graciously came, and all other stakeholders. And then, we submitted the cries and the hymns of Nigerians to them. That look, either band A, band B, band whatever. That look, it is excruciating going through this. We know that times are hard and for these corporate bodies because power sector had been somehow deregulated, but the government is still given some a modicum of subsidy in order to alleviate the sufferings of the public and all over the world there should always, always be handouts to the citizens too because they own the country so we cannot leave them to the dictates and the whims and caprices of Shylock traders who want to make only profit so based on that the Senate Committee on Power came up and then invited them and they spoke and we presented the views of Nigerians and we brought in other stakeholders and they came with some resolutions 
which were adequately submitted to the executive and then the ministry was given an advice and what to do and then we are expecting some further feedback immediately we came into session that is a shimba plenary session so and we have not left it like that and we are seeing some would come of looking backwards from the ministry and from the state from the uh do i call it the the regulating uh, uh, uh outfits tcn G, uh, denko disco disco whatever co so we can see some of them are now trying to bend so and within a very short while you hear from us again and we are between that one in other sectors now very quickly as we have just little than five minutes to go this magazine very beautifully put together i'm very sure a lot of our viewers at home will be asking how can some of your constituency members and across board nigerians obtain a copy of this is there a fee to it uh, the cost of publication is also another concern many nigerians will be looking at could you just kindly touch light on that yes That's yes is uh it's not for sale we have so many copies all senators we have in their constituency offices we are going to make sure that it goes to every embassy in Niger operating in nigeria airports aircraft flying within the space of nigeria all media houses all ministries departments and agencies we take to the nlc labor concern we take to even to the students in the schools in their libraries i will make sure that it's widely circulated and uh, whoever will be interested to need further copies can get across to us to my office either through phone call or text message or whatsapp message then we make sure that he or she or they get copies of the magazine this is a media edition and we have enough copies that can go around well i must thank you senator as we come to a conclusion but just for our viewers just to reiterate again senator adeyemi adaramodu is the publicator of the magazine in the office of editor-in-chief it's a publication of the office of the chairman senate committee on media and publicity and he has said it will be available for nigerians to access at the various places he has mentioned uh institutes of public use the airports the offices of even senators representing your constituency please feel free and pick up the magazine as it highlights some of these subtopics we have talked about this morning we have touched light on the issue of democracy and the power of legislature we've talked about the 10th senate the emergence of the visionary leadership of the chairman of the national assembly and president of the senate senator godswill obota pabio con we're also going to look again at one of the comments he made following his emergence into the leadership position at the Interparliamentary Union, IPU, uh, where the gains of legislative diplomacy have been underscored, and much like in the lines of legislative interventions that the 10th Assembly is carrying out for the best interest of the Nigerian people. Once again, Senator, I would like to thank you and uh, get your thoughts and comments to President Bola Metinibu ahead of his first year in office anniversary. Please, let's get your thoughts. Oh, yes. Uh, we just want to be grateful to God for taking Nigeria so far and thus far in the, in the journey of nation building and then shared prosperity. The, pre, the government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a government that we will say is quite courageous in confronting the myriad of problems that had been facing Nigeria since all these days. And like I said, you cannot break, make omelet without breaking an egg. When we talk about the stand, the, 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 the stand and the, the strides of the government presently, they are very commendable. When we look at security, which was very, very critical and had been very body issue as and a very great saw on the feet of Nigerians for a very long time. We say that 
been subsiding. We give kudos to that. When we look at the economy, the Naira would have been around 3,000 Naira to a dollar by now because before we used to borrow Naira to help dollar. We used to borrow dollar to help dollar. Not borrowing dollar or borrowing Naira to help Naira. But by the time we said, let us know where had the previous economic strides had taken us to in terms of the value of Naira. Then the Naira started, started buckling under the jackboot of the other foreign currencies. So for reviving and from saving the Naira out of the IC, bringing it out of the ICU, economic ICU, intensive care unit, breathing new oxygen to it, we have to commend him. And we have to commend him for evil, getting deep, global public to have another hope that there's a country called Nigeria, which is a giant of Africa. We had always been a giant with clay legs before the government of Bola Tinobu put its strings and bones into that clay leg so that Nigeria can stand up very well as a giant of Africa. Not only he becoming the chairman of West African Union, the ECOWAS, being a very pivotal voice and figure in the EU, be the person that will even be nominated is able to address Commonwealth and address the UN Assembly. Equals. So, we can say that Nigeria is back on the world map. Now, the only thing we can do is to encourage him. And not only that, look at the youth development issue, the students' no loan, which is very novel in Nigeria, which has just started now. Look at some CNG other interventions buses. where the CANG buses start running. It will bring down the cost of transport fares on the streets of Nigeria and several others. Like I said, when you want to make omelette, you break an egg. But by the time you are eating omelette, sumptuously, and then we know the attendant effects of that sumptuous meal that is going to promote good health. So we believe that the government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has started well by confronting the issues, holding the bulls by the horns. Because we cannot, when we, like uh, my, in, the, in, in my Yoruba area, they will say, one bemo boishe, one way bumo egbe, many that, that is a saw <laughs> on your leg. You are now pampering it. If you don't be careful, that leg will be amputated. So, because his government is not nursing that wood, pampering the wood, he has now gone ahead to open the, 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 the that wood and then apply the necessary iodine or whatever that can make it healed. So, the only thing we can do from the legislature is to support the government. Not only supporting the government, where and when it is necessary for us to even give knocks. We give our knocks. Where it is necessary for us to give kudos. We give kudos with our action. So it might not be through the words of the mouth. That's why I said executive legisl legis legislative uh, uh, cordiality is not, is not for fun. It's for the benefit of Nigeria and for Nigerians. But if we sit down and then we just do the social media, that oh, a cow knocks somebody down on the street of uh, of Garki. So we are summoning the minister. So if you don't be careful, within 30 minutes, go and resuscitate, go and kill all cows. So, and then we start punching. That is when we know that the assembly is working. No, it is not so. So we have to. We partner the progress and then of a united country we call Nigeria. And then we be, we, we be, we, it behoves that Nigerians too, we join hands with the government to let us see our policies and our, our programs of government through. Because we don't have any other place. And then the last is that all Nigerians, we too must. We must have it in mind that we have a country and then our traits, behavioral traits too, must suggest that we really want Nigeria to change for the better. 
So where you are at the first station, don't shun on the queue. Even without that, if you own the first station, if someone wants to go there and buy two thousand naira fuel, make it two thousand. Don't readjust your meter. Your meter. Thank you very and much. And again, when you even get to the to uh, you are on the road and then the traffic light says stop, stop. Don't move out of it because it is garbage, garbage out. The the citizen that cannot obey simple law, if he gets to government, definitely is going to be a lawbreaker. So that's the way I see it.